Hey game developers and welcome back to the C-Sharp Fundamentals for Unity course and in this one we're going to be talking about composition which is very similar to inheritance but has a couple key defining features. Now before I continue I want to make sure uh, to direct you to the previous episode on inheritance. If you haven't watched it already make sure to check it out um, or if you want to see the entire course from the beginning there's a playlist in the top right that'll run through every episode. Okay and with that said go ahead and follow along with me now. Um, and this is our previous code where I just deleted the um, classes here. I'll actually undo. Um, I just deleted these battleship classes, so I'm going to remove those because uh, we're just going to be using this vanilla code here. And I'm actually going to delete these two. And then we're going to uh, create an interface, which is how you basically implement a uh, in a composition in C sharp. So an interface is very similar to a class, but the difference is that it only contains signatures of methods, properties, and some other features. So when I say it only contains a signature, what I mean is that in a function we cannot define anything. So do you see this function right here? Um, we have console.readkey in here. Now this uh, would actually throw a compiler error because we had an implementation in the interface. You would actually need the function to um, look something like this. So we delete these, and then it would have a semicolon here, right? So that's just, I'm just showing you that uh, for what an interface would do, um, but obviously leave this how it was before. Okay, um, and why don't we go ahead and talk about the interface we're gonna be implementing. So in this example, we're gonna be using guns, and say a gun will have attachments on its uh, barrel where its sight would go, um, say it has a different magazine. So we might want to, for all our different gun classes, um, you know, grab whatever that, uh, uh, sorry, not component, uh, attachment is. All right, so why don't I go ahead and start with just writing interface um, gun, right? Okay, and so it just looks like a class definition. You can see it's exactly the same. So I'm going to go ahead and um, write, I guess, the first method here. So it's going to be public uh, actually, this is just going to be void. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, so void uh, get ammo. Actually, yeah, get max ammo capacity. All right, and then we just do it like that. And th that's it. That's really all you do. Um, and this might seem really trivial, or, trivial or pointless right now, but the uh, the purpose of this is again, um, like we did last time, we're going to be able to access uh, the details of any gun class without actually having to worry about specifically grabbing, okay, this is an AUG, why don't we grab that one's ammo, or this is, I don't know, uh, some sort of pistol or Desert Eagle or something. So that way you only have to access them as one uh, type, which will be this interface gun, for example. Okay, so I'm going to write uh, void get, actually this is, <laughs> these are not void, sorry, this should be an integer. And I'm actually going to create an enum before writing this next one of, like, let's say public enum, um, let's say site, right, or gun site. And then we'll say, um, we can say we're using iron sites, um, red dot uh, holographic, we'll have like a 4x, right? Oh, I can't start with a number uh, four times. Let's do that. Okay, so uh, now we have all these. Uh, why don't we go ahead and uh, implement that in here? So, gun site is the return value of our get um, site, right? And I'll change that to gun site to be more consistent here. Okay, uh, and well, now we should probably implement a class that. Um, implements this uh, interface here, right? So very similar to inheritance, actually exactly the same. We're going to be writing public uh, class. Um, let's say, let's make this an aug, right? And normally I wouldn't always just make a class specifically for each gun. I'd probably just do something like stat sets. But for this example, um, I think it'll work pretty well for making a class for each type of gun, just to show you how we can use these interfaces. Okay, so uh, our aug will obviously implement gun, right? And and that's, you notice this is uh, the same as using um, 
inheritance. Uh, the difference is that it will throw a compiler error here saying, oh, well, it's not implementing either of these interface members, and it needs to implement them all, right? Um, and so we need to put every single thing in here, whereas with inheritance, it will go ahead and just replace what the functions will do. Because this way, if we if we left it like this, and then we made a new og, and then we tried to call one of these, it would be calling you know an empty function, which is why the compiler won't let us do that. Okay, so why don't I go ahead and implement these, right? So um, I'm going to go ahead and first hit control period on this, and then it'll let it implement it automatically. And notice that all it does is um, say public get gun site, right? It doesn't use an override or anything because these are not virtual functions. Uh, it just needs them to be implemented so that uh, somewhere else they can be grabbed, right? Okay, so I'll delete these, uh, these safe not implemented exceptions, um, and they will again do errors because these need return values. So um, why don't we go ahead and say by default our augs gun site, right? So our big gun site um, site equals uh, gun site dot Let's say we have a four times on our og, right? Um, and so we'll just return site. As is really trivial, and what I would normally do is return a property, uh, or use a property instead of a getter function, because this is kind of a Java style of coding. Um, but we'll talk about properties in a later episode, so I don't want to really complicate this. Okay, so private um, int max max ammo capacity, right? Let's say 30. I have no idea how much you know, it could actually store. Um, so we'll say max ammo capacity will be returned here. Oops. OK. Um, and that's all we had to do for this. So why don't I go ahead and do something similar to like I did last time, where I just show you two examples uh, being called. So let's do a uh, desert equal here. And let's say the ammo capacity is like, I don't know, seven. Um, and then our gun site will just be iron. Okay, so now why don't I go ahead and create a new aug and a new deagle. And then uh, I'll put them in an array to show you how that works. And then we can call uh, all their functions, right? So, you know, I'll actually, I'll actually give them a name too, so we can see clearly, right? So public uh, name equals um, og, and then and I'll actually change these to private and private. Oops. Okay, so now in here, why don't we go ahead and make a an array? So um, I'll do a list of guns. Okay. And then um, guns dot add new aug, and we'll do the same thing with a desert eagle. Okay, and now uh, we're going to iterate over them and just print all their details, right? Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit for each uh, gun in a uh, gun in. <laughs> Can't type guns. Uh, let's go ahead and actually print. Actually, uh, sorry, console dot write line. Okay, and then we'll do gun dot. Um, oh, you know what? Let's actually make another function here. So public uh, string. Um, get gets details, right? Um, and I'll put this in our uh, interface here. So this is like a good example of why I'd want to use uh, composition is that um, we want to be able to print uh, all the details of every gun, um, and when we're iterating over it, we can't access the uh, you know private members of an interface or of a class, <clears throat> unless we actually use the interface because that's what we're referencing. So let's go ahead and implement that for both of these guys. And let's see, you get details. Um, so what I'll do here is return 
gun dot oops actually just name um, plus this plus um, actually has and then I'll do plus uh, get gun site dot to string um, plus uh, let's say and um, plus ammo capacity plus um, max ammo right okay um, and this should be a function okay so why don't we go ahead and just copy this over to our aug okay so now why don't we just go ahead and console that right line gun dot get details okay so now we should be able to just run this and then we'll see um, how the how this interface will uh, allow us to look at this with polymorphism and just uh, print all the details from both of these guns even though they're different so I'll go ahead and hit start up here okay and there we go we see og and og because it looks like I forgot to change the name of the desert eagle here so I right, go ahead and copy that and paste it here and I'll hit start one more time okay and then we see og has four times and 30 max ammo and we see Desert Eagle has iron sights and seven max ammo, right? And what's nice about this is that, yeah, we did we did write a lot of code for something kind of simple, um, but now we can do this for any gun, right? So we have just an interface with three three things in it, um, and then we have a class for each of our guns, right? And we did we do a lot of repeating here, so uh, some of this could be managed as inheritance too. Uh, but but ultimately look at the implementation here. Uh, we basically kind of have just one gun dot get details here to achieve like you know printing everything out of these separate classes without having to go og dot name and you know all that stuff. So that's actually going to be it for composition and polymorphism and interfaces as well. Uh, I will see you in the next episode, but before you go, if you're interested in making your first game faster, I have some resources. First one is a free ebook on how to create your first game, so go ahead and click that if you want that totally free. And then the second one here is a sample video from our paid course um, that you can watch totally free on YouTube. Go ahead and click that uh, in the top right now. And with all that said, I will see you in the next episode, and have a good day.